First time trying to broadcast directly to YouTube. I'm not sure. I think we're live now. Is this true? Yes, hopefully. Um, so, I'm out here in the Giddy shop today, Ben Giddy Baker of CB Giddy, cbgiddy.com. Uh, to work on a guitar, I had built this guitar out of an old dynamite crate several weeks back, and I'm not too proud to admit that I got in a little bit of a hurry, cut some corners, did some things too quickly, and ended up with some problems, uh, specifically on the fretboard. I've got some what I call seesaw frets, frets that are seated in their slot, but kind of rock a little bit from end to end. So I decided to get out here to the workbench and try to fix this because I really like playing this guitar. It's really uh, uh, one that I've become very fond of. Uh, let me get a pick here. And I hope you can hear me okay. I'm using, uh, I'm trying out some new equipment today. I've got a wireless microphone, a lavalier mic pinned to my uh, lapel here connected so I'm not tethered by wires. And the other new thing that I'm trying today is broadcasting directly to YouTube. Usually it broadcasts to Facebook. Um, but we're going to try YouTube because, of course, Facebook has been uh, sailing through some rocky waters lately. And uh, YouTube is a little less intrusive. So we might start trying this out a little bit more. I'm not sure of is how to see your comments, anything like that. Got a lot more to figure out with the technical side of this, but uh, hopefully, I'm going to be able to make this work out pretty well and uh, have a good go at it. So, I'm out here in the giddy shop again to work on the dynamite crate guitar to fix some fret issues. I've got some string buzzing, I've got some seesaw frets, and I want to get that taken care of. So, I'm going to start by taking off the strings. I've got her strung up as a low open G tuning, a GDG. And as you can tell, hopefully you can hear that uh, through the mic here on me. It, it... So it's not bad, it's really not bad, but I like things to be as playable as possible and to have as few issues and those little string buzzes still get to me a little bit just a little bit so I'm going to try to work on that and then of course restring it and uh, here maybe I'm going to turn myself down a bit and maybe I can see comments as they scroll by again figuring this out as I go here uh, let's see I'm not seeing any any comments? Oh well, I'm just going to proceed as if somebody's watching. Okay, so I'm going to start by removing the strings that are on it. Now this is strong 42, 32, 22 gauge strings here. Um, and I happen to have some replacements here for when I take them off. The other thing I need to adjust while I have the strings off is uh, the depth of the nut slots, a couple of other things. Now I don't I guess I don't technically have to remove the strings. I'm going to use my handy dandy string winder here to speed things up. I'm going to loosen these strings up a good bit. And because I'm using one of our barrel house tail pieces here, a three string tail piece, I can just remove the strings from their little slot there. And then I'm going to try to coil them up here at the headstock out of the way so that I can work on the neck. Now, I've tried this before. I've had some mixed results with it. Sometimes they get all up and such, but um, hopefully these are pretty new strings. They've only been on here a week or so. So I can take my bridge off. I notice that my string spacing on the bridge is a little uneven. Maybe I'll be able to fix that before I'm done. Take these off and just kind of coil them up here. Now, I, I entitled this video Fixing Mistakes on the Dynamite Crate Guitar, and the fretting is the, the one that affects playing the most. I did make some other mistakes. You know, I've been building guitars for a while, but when you get in a hurry, you still skip over some things or forget some things. Um, it's hard to tell now that the strings are wrapped around it, but I ended up with the top and bottom sides of my tailpiece not being truly parallel to each other. 
there's an angle there so that when I drilled my tuner holes and tried to get them screwed in, it's forcing those tuner posts to a bit of an angle, which of course makes it harder, they have to work harder to turn, and that can cause, to gear, cause gear slippage uh, when you're trying to tighten the strings up, so that can be a problem, but it hasn't really happened yet, it hasn't affected the playability, so I'm going to leave that go and hope that it, uh, hope that that just works out. Um, and I'm still, I'm tapping on my phone here, trying to see if there's a way I can get into the chat, like to see what people might be chatting, but I'm not having much luck. So I don't want to take too much time screwing around with this and get on with business here. Okay. So I got my strings out of the way. Now I had to freeze up my fretboard. Now there are different ways to, to find bad frets on a fretboard, and it's usually not by looking at it. You know, looking at this, if you look at the frets really close, you can see that a couple of them have issues, what I call seesaw frets, where they kind of rock in their slot. And there's one specifically, some, like this one, you can, I can feel it rocking back and forth. So I'm actually going to grip under the edge. Now what can cause this to happen, there, carefully pull that fret back out of its slot there, see? What can cause seesaw frets to happen is hammering too hard when you're installing them. If you bang them too hard in the middle, it can kind of bend that middle down and force those ends up, and then it's going to kind of seesaw. Um, another problem, another thing that can contribute to this is having too wide of a slot for the tang width of the fret wire you're using. Um, that might be contributing here. Uh, we always try to put a little bit of a radius into the fret wire we use before installing it into the neck. That can help hold those fret ends down and keep them in place. So what I'm kind of gently doing here by hand is trying to introduce a little bit of that radius or arc or curve into this short piece of fret wire so that the ends kind of angled downward. It's not as easy to do with a, a piece that's already been cut to length like this. And I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to. Let me get some pliers here. From the, uh, are you able to see them? Yeah, my, my uh, CB Giddy uh, uh, tool holder kit over here. I've got two of them side by side to hold all of the, the tools that I like to use, have on my bench. So I'm using these, I don't know what kind you call them, they're, they're unserrated jaw, they're not needle nose, they're kind of flat nose pliers, just trying to put a little bit of a radius. Now of course I don't have to salvage this same piece of fret wire, but I kind of want to. Now another thing, widening the tang of your fret wire can help it stay in the hole or in the slot better. So to widen the tang of fret wire, Stuart McDonald, I don't like to uh, advertise Stewie Mac, but there are some tools that they provide that you just really can't find elsewhere. This is one of them. It's special pliers. If you look at the jaws there, they got some big uh, kind of teeth on them. And if you use these on the tang, I'm putting the tang of the fret wire into the teeth and giving it a good squeeze, I know you're not going to be able to see this, but it, it introduces a wider wave into the tang of that fret wire. It basically spreads it out, makes it wider and wavier, which a wider tang helps it stay in the slot better. So I'm going to do that for the full length of this piece. I put a little bit of radius in it, on it, do it, something like that. Now I'm going to try to gently tap it back into its slot and see if I've corrected the problem of it rocking back and forth. Got my handy dandy CB Giddy fretting hammer here. Be careful to not let it roll. All right, now that fret, this is the one I just pounded in here. That is nice and snug now. There's no rocking back and forth. That one's in there. It's in there so good, I can't even tell which one I just did. I think it's this one. So I'm going to take my little fretting file here and kind of clean up 
the end where a little bit of that sharp fret edge overhangs. This is another file that unfortunately we don't sell here at CB Giddy. I got from Stumac. It's got a safe, a rounded safe edge on the one side and it's a fret end uh, file. And there's just, you can try to make your own out of a, like a small rat tail file, but I tell you what, uh, there are some things that I found are just worth spending money on. And a good fretting file is one of them. All right, so I corrected that fret. Let's see if I've got any more rockers here. I've got one that isn't quite in. You know, when you have a fret that's raised up a little bit on one end, that isn't fully in the slot, it can, a raised fret can cause a string to buzz when you, when you fret the string in front of it. So I want to try to reduce that. And just a quick note, you guys, you don't have to stay quiet or anything. I got a lav mic on and okay. run machines, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> the uh, shop guys out here being, trying to be quiet because I'm doing this. Don't let me interrupt. Production must go on. All right, so I'm just going to try to tap. That fret doesn't want to get down in there any further, and you don't want to do too much. Like, see, just through that banging on it, it kind of caused an issue. So now i got to try to get that fret back out. And when removing frets, you got to be really careful uh, because when that tang pulls back out of the fretboard, it can cause pieces to pull up and chip. Let me turn this around so it's closer to the camera, and we'll see. I see I got another rocker here. I knew I had more, more problems. Sometimes when a fret is really loose, you can gently get your fingernails under there, pull it up and out of its slot, like I just did with this one. And now, what I'm doing, I'm putting a tang down onto the edge of my bench, trying to kind of balance it on edge on its tang, so that the tang is sticking down at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm, I'm kind of trying to hold it like that and apply a little downward pressure with my thumb. Just to try to work a little bit of radius into it. Uh, it didn't do much that time because it's really, this is a short piece of fret wire to try to be bending. So now I'm going to grip it with these same pliers and just gently now, carefully, I'm kind of gripping it and then just gently giving it a little torn there. A little torn. Okay, it's just a little bit of radius to it. I think I got a little bit on there. Now, I said use the Stewie Mac pliers here to widen that tank. There is another way that can be a little tricky, but I'm gonna try it on this one. You get you a pair of mini nippers, side nippers like this, and you can kind of take them, grip the tank, and just kind of try to give it a little bit of a twisty twist there. Enough of a, a, a twerk, a twerk. Yeah, yeah, not a twerk. Just enough of a twink there without, you gotta be careful to not bend the fret wire itself. So, like I say, that method is pretty iffy. You can ruin a piece of fret wire pretty quick. I haven't found any uh, foolproof way to widen that tang except for these pliers. So this piece of fret wire now kind of has all sorts of stuff going on with it. So I'm actually going to let that one go. And I'm going to install a new piece. This piece is a little bit longer, and I'm going to use my magic uh, fret wire radiusing method, which is to hold one end, take the fleshy part of your thumb against the tag, your other finger on top, and kind of draw it through putting more pressure past the thumb a little bit there. And you can do it several times. You can start to get a little bit of curve there in that fret wire, which often is just enough. All right, so I'm going to install a piece of 
of this here into this slot. Now this slot was a little loose, so before I do, I'm just going to widen this tank up just enough to make sure, because I don't want to have to do this again. I think I'm fine. I love being out here at the bench, love working on the things, but correcting mistakes, I'd rather spend my time building something new rather than trying to fix something already done. Now see this fret wire is little cantankerous. This slot, there it goes. So now these are uh, fretting nippers. They got a very thin uh, top uh, cutting blade width on there. I don't know what the term is. I should. I got a thin one, and we're working on being able to produce these in-house here at CB Giddy. There's some uh, piece of equipment coming that's going to open up some doors on the fabrication side, and I'm pretty excited about that. There will be more information on that in the days ahead, I hope. So, uh, looking at my little screen here, it looks like there might be six or seven of you out there watching. That's awesome for our first try on direct to YouTube with no pre-advertising. Thank you. Uh, I can't see your comments, if indeed comments are, are being allowed. Uh, like I say, this Broadcasting Direct to YouTube, is this is our first time really trying it, so hopefully uh, you're uh, out there able to communicate with each other. Unfortunately not with me. I'll work on figuring out that, hopefully, in the days ahead. <laughs> It's a lot to try to keep up with around here, I'll tell you what. Um, I keep looking at this, hoping I'm going to magically find a way to uh, communicate with people, but I'm not seeing it. All right, so back to work here. So I've got that fret end, but of course now all my other frets have nice, nice smooth rounded ends. This new one does not. It's sharp, it's nasty, you don't want to uh, expose your fingers to it. So I've got one of our fret bevel files. This is one of the early, early, I think this is the first prototype one that I ever made. Um, they've come a long way since then, but I'm going to use this to gently file a little bit of bevel onto that new fret without, ideally, without uh, hurting all of the other frets. Uh, let's see, there's another file I need. Having the right tools, I'll tell you what, makes a big difference. So I'm just trying to remove that tang that sticks out and get enough of a bevel on the top of this thread without marring the wood too much. I mean, one good thing about homemade instruments like cigar box guitars, this was a dynamite crate I turned into a guitar. You know, this isn't, at least when I build them, the one thing I tell myself is this isn't, uh, it isn't a Martin, it isn't a Taylor, it isn't a high end thing. You can go that route if you want to. I very rarely do. I try to keep mine fairly simple, straightforward. And if it got a rough edge here or there, I don't worry about it all that much, you know. Unless, and that's part of the reason for everything I'm doing today, the time I do worry about it is if it affects the playability. When I build a guitar for me, which this one is, at least for now, I'll like, give it away and sell it eventually, but if it's going to be for me, I need it to be a player. I need there to be no rough edges. I don't want anything digging into my arm fat. I don't want the bridge to be sharp so that my hand hits it. I don't want anything in the way of my picking zone, like raised sound hole covers or anything. I don't want any of that. I want it to be a player uh, because I don't want to be having to think about strumming a certain way or not hitting this or staying away from that. I don't. I got to keep my brain clear when I'm trying to play because, you know, there are some natural born musicians and, and there are those of us who have to really work at it. And uh, the less I have to think about it procedurally while playing, the better. So, act, you know, nice slow action is important. But to me, intonation. 
coordination is important. You know, we're using, I'm using these instruments on the Giddy Gang show, on stage, trying to record demos. Might take them to a, a session, you know, a local music session somewhere, and it needs to, it needs to be good. I'm seeing that my, uh, my wireless mic base unit battery is starting to get a little low. I might have to take that offline, change the batteries. I assume it'll start giving me a warning when it gets lower, but I'm ready for that. I got some spare batteries. Alright, now back to work on these two frets. I'm kind of smoothing off these edges of the one I just installed. The sharp frets, you know, that's another thing that when you're playing, they jump out there and they grab your hand, and you got to think, oh boy, there's that thread again. I wish I would have smoothed that over more when I had the chance. You know, it's, it's a distraction. building that's something I would recommend so take just a minute here to thank you for tuning in today um, and watching here our not my inaugural broadcast direct to YouTube you know we always have broadcast to Facebook but Facebook is uh, I don't know where that ships headed but it seems like there's uh, some rocks <laughs> At least a sandbar in the path there. They're getting some bad press, so we're uh, looking into the, a little more into YouTube these days. And again, if you're just tuning in, these are special pliers that are for widening the fret tang. They they make it have a, a more of a wave pattern. Widens it, makes it stay down in the slot better. Hey, just saw a a chat pop up there. Uh, Moonshine Designs is out there. Ryan Mackey. How you doing, Ryan? Good to see you, man. And I'm glad to know I can see comments pop up. I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on out there, but something. So, alright. Now I got my piece of fret wire. I, add, I added a little bit of radius to it. I widened the tang. I'm going to gently tap down into this slot. Again, trying my best to not... Um, you want to hear me better? Well, I can crank up the gain a little bit. Uh, there is some background noise um, because this is an active shop here, the CB Giddy shop. Let's see, get back out of there. All right, a little bit more volume now. Are you able to hear me better? Got my microphone right down here. I guess I could lower that a little bit, maybe get a little bit of. All right, let me know if that volume's any better there, Ryan. Thank you for letting me know. I'm kind of flying. I am mostly blind here, <laughs> hoping and praying. All right. So I don't want this fret wire to roll over. Because if you're pounding away on your fret wire, um, 
and it's rolled over, you're going to dent your fretboard with the edge of the crown, and you don't want to do that. So try and, try and, and gently, you know, gently, a little better. All right. No. I can crank it up more. I ain't proud. So I'll take the gain up towards 10. I don't want to get it to too high. I don't want it to... Uh, uh, overdrive and start crackling and stuff, but hopefully that's a little better. Get a little better volume out of it. I'm uh, trying out for the first time a wireless mic setup. So I got my wireless thing here, goes to a bass unit, that's plugged into the iPad that the Mevo connects with. There's all sorts of crap going on around here. Um, and hopefully, well it seems like it's at least partly working, so that's good. Alright, so I'm trying to gently tap along the length of the wire there, and I just saw that the tapping is overloading the mics. Oh, sorry about that, if you got your body in kind of All right, so that fret wire is now seated in there pretty darn good. I think a lot better than it was. And uh, again, if you're just joining in, what I'm doing now is fixing some mistakes I made on this Dynamite Crate guitar I finished a week or two ago. I had cut some corners, I was in a hurry, because of course, anytime I'm finishing a new build, especially a new build where I'm trying something new, this one was, was new. I took a, a wooden crate and turned it into a box and turned that box into a guitar. So I was in a hurry to see how she sounded. I wanted to get her strung up. I cut some corners, I rushed through some things, and one thing you don't want to rush through is fretting. Because if you don't, if it's not right, you tend to know it pretty quick. So I've played it several times on the Giddy Gang show and such since then. Um, I've played, you know, I, I, if you've seen the show, you know, I'm playing and banging away on it. And, but for a, an instrument I build for myself, I want it to really be a player. I, I don't want it to have issues and distractions. And that's why. today trying to fix some of those mistakes. And I'd like to think learn from them and not make them the end of the day. Let's not get too, uh, too carried away, right? <laughs> uh, I guess I should turn this on. My own light there. This old light here uh, is a cool old industrial style uh, neck light that came out of the crayon factory my grandpa worked in. So I was happy to have that on the bench. So I got my new thread in here. I used an early prototype of our beveling file to try to put a bevel into the ends. Now I'm just using a little fairly fine tooth flat file to bring that bevel. Oh, cutting into my wood a little more than I want to be there. It's easy to do with a, a file of that nature. And then some 220 grit sandpaper to just kind of take the purse off the edge of that fret, bring that bevel a little in, a little more in line with the others, and at the same time <laughs> take out those scuffs that I just put into the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, it's right in line by getting whacked with the neck. Alright, so this fret's starting to look good. Do a little bit of rounding of the edges with my uh, safe edge file here. Just so there's no burrs, there's no sharp edges when your hand is moving up and down that neck. You know, I want it to feel like butter. Wicked butter. So on a general note, uh, we actually hit 60 degrees up here in New Hampshire on Friday. It was lovely. Got outside, did some yard work, cut some brush, did some burning. Saturday, not so nice. It was a little damp. Started off mid-50s and fell steadily throughout the day. Yesterday, Sunday, the sleet and freezing rain started, continued through this morning, and now 
Most of all that's gone. We actually had about a half inch on the ground this morning. Now most of that's gone and it's raining like heck out there. Pouring down pretty good, so. Still kind of waiting for spring to spring around here. Got a taste of it, just enough to make it all that more heartbreaking when the sleep shows up, but you'll have that. All right, so now if I'm gonna take a close look at my fretboard, each one of my frets against the light. Let's see, I'm gonna blow off some of the crap first too. Oh, that overdrove it, sorry. All right. One that needs a little bit of tapping down gently because I don't want to bend it. So get it to fully set down into the slot because I'm trying to eliminate the, uh, the string buzz I was getting. All right, so now I think I've got my frets pretty well set, pretty well reset in some cases. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to use an, oops, see, I knew that this was trying to salvage these strings would lead to some trouble, so I'm going to just kind of try again to get them to stay put. All right, so now I'm going to do some fret rocking. Uh, there are tools that are specifically for fret rocking. And basically what that is doing is testing the height of each fret against the ones around it. And so, let's see, this would work better if I turn towards the camera as such. So I've got a machinist square here, which ideally should have a completely straight on this side. I then place it over three frets and try to pivot it or rock it back and forth on that center fret. And if you feel it go boop, 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 like seesaw a little bit, you know that this fret is higher than these two, and that's a problem. Now, when I do it here, I get a little bit of rock, so I'm going to try to tap the second fret down a little more at this end. All right, yeah, I think. Something, something ain't right down here. Something is not right with this slot because it shouldn't be doing that. So I'm going to take this fret back out, which of course I've ruined, and do the dingle with that. And I'm going to take my CB Giddy fretting saw and freehand, which is never recommended. I'm just going to touch up this slot because maybe there's a little raised bump in there. There's something keeping that fret from wanting to get all the way down into the slot on this end. And it's causing me trouble, so I don't overdo it and saw it too deep. All right, so let's see what that did. I think I've got just enough fret wire left to have one more go. It's got enough of a, a, a radius to it, clipping the sharp end off. Oh, got to widen my tang a little bit, just to make it stay, especially now that this will be the third time I've tried to install a fret into this slot, and I just got the saw back in there. Pretty much every time you mess about with a fret slot like that, it's going to widen it a little bit. And the more she gets widened, the more the teeth uh, get down in there, you know, the, the, the teeth of the fret tang you're going to hit a point where this fret is not going to stay in there anymore and then your options have been reduced then you're looking at glue super glue epoxy all sorts of things that are best avoided if you at all can all right now i got it down in there i'm going to check okay no rock Neither rocking nor rolling. 
is what we want. Close back off. Bevel file my ends to get the angle on. Taking off more wood than I have done. One of the reasons that this, <laughs> this is, as I said, an early prototype of our fret beveling file is I used a much uh, more aggressive file in it than we use now. So it really takes material off quickly, which can be good, but it can also be not so good. So 220 grit sandpaper again to kind of get there and smooth her down. Round these edges over. Let me know how the audio is sounding, those of you out there watching, especially like when I'm tapping and stuff, it shows a little red bar that I'm over overdriving the audio. How horrible is it on your end is what I'm curious about. Because of course I would prefer it to be as unhorrible as possible. And the comments that you make only stay up on my screen for few seconds, so I'm trying not to, try not to miss anything. All right, so now my fret rocker here. Yeah, it's still rocking a little bit in the middle.
spin. All right, so that's that side. I'm just going to quickly run off the other side. See, nice and quiet now, right? No trouble. <laughs> sharp edges off of there. So, I don't know how many of you are, have tried fretting or have done a lot of fretting, but it, I hesitate to say that fretting is hard, but there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. And the precision that's really required, both in placement and in spacing, but also the height, you know, it, it, it's, it can be a bit intimidating. Intimidating, but I think definitely worth having a go at. All right. So there's that. I think my fretboard is now good to go. I'm just going to run over and get a little bit of linseed oil on this rag. So I can slip up the, uh, the finish there. Um, hopefully soon we'll have something very well suited to this purpose. But I'll be right back. The mic will still be going. Uh, I'm So now I'm taking these strings that I left on there, bringing them back down, hooking them into the CB Giddy Barrel House style three string stainless steel tailpiece made right here in the CB Giddy shop. There's our Nick Matt. Hello, hello. I stole your tape and I never brought it back to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I steal it. I didn't bring it back. Who's up to? This little mic, which goes to that little thing, and YouTube. YouTube. We're on the YouTube. The YouTubes. Live to the tube. Anyone we know? Uh, yeah. Uh, Ryan Matthew is out there. Mike Moradian and uh, others. Other fine people. I'd be interested to hear you guys' feedback if you already have it. If you haven't already. Well, they told me. I don't know how well they can. Probably. Uh, I'm not going to talk into his chest like that. It'd be weird. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah, uh, audio, you know, the noise out there. Who that? Hi, Nick. Dave Gatton. Hey, Dave. Dave, is it Gatton or Gatton? Okay, so now my bridge. Now I noticed when I took this bridge off that somehow my string spacing did not end up even there. So I'm going to try to Thank you. 
string buzz after doing all of that. One thing you can do to try to combat string buzz is raise your bridge. Now if your action's already high then you know there's only so high you can go and still have it be really be credible. Um, but one of my favorite tricks, let's see if I've got any around here, I might have to run off camera again. One of my favorite tricks is to use old coins to bring the bridge height up. Uh, pennies, or feet pennies, uh, buffalo nickels, things like that. And I thought I had some. And I try to keep a, a wide range of stuff stashed here on my bench. My Canadian says it's supposed to buzz. I know my chain spiel says the same thing. I don't get, uh, I don't get overly particular about a lot of things. But I tell you what, there is something about a buzzing string that just sets my teeth on edge. And uh, I don't like it. Alright, I found a penny. side of the bridge reduced the string buzz enough that I think I can live with it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling okay about this now. The triple Ben 6 out there, uh, you're welcome and thank you for watching. Uh, you're right. For me, it, it's not just a business. Really, the, the business <laughs> is kind of the, uh, the support system for the real mission, which is spreading the word. Spreading the word about homemade instruments, handmade instruments, letting people know that, hey, you can do, you can do this. Anyone can do this. Uh, whether you've got a workbench, a, a folding table, a kitchen table, a kitchen counter, there's people out there building these things in their apartments. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. I mean, you, you can build a playable instrument, a playable guitar, and make music on it. There are people, uh, like over in Africa and other places, where if they want an instrument, they have to. They have to make their own. It's the only option. Of course, for a lot of us, it's more of a hobby. We could buy a, a store-bought conventional guitar if we want to, but there's something about this. That high-pitched sound you hear now is fret wire being fed on a bandsaw. All right, 
I think I have successfully fixed several mistakes that I've made while building this. I'm feeling pretty happy about it. And I gotta tell you, having a point under the bridge, I actually prefer it. I think it looks cool. And I love old coins. So Alright. Oh, there's number two. There's two, Michael. Banging the gooseneck with my head stop. So I'm gonna make sure this is tuned up after whacking it into the uh, gooseneck there. Ozark Cigar Box Guitar Festival coming again in August for the second year, second annual, organized by Ryan Mackey down there in Arkansas. Forget the name of the town. All right. Um, I brought this out. This is a printed out two-page sheet of tablature for the old song Mama Tried. Merle Haggard, great old country song, one of the greatest singer and songwriters of country music and folk music. So Mama Tried, I just posted this tablature and I went a little beyond with this one. It includes the chords above the words and the chord forms for three string open G in addition to the tablature. This is now available for free on CigarBoxGuitar.com. Not Cigar Box Guitars. Keep that S off of there. CigarBoxGuitar.com. Uh, the second link on the front page will take you right to it. You can download this, print this. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite Mel Haggard songs. I learned it from my good friend Tyler Fox. the melody of a song. So if I was following just the tablature, picking the melody. But of course when I was singing it, I wasn't picking the melody. I was strumming the chord. Strumming is an important part of playing, especially if you're going to go out and play with other people in a jam session or a singing session, music session. Learning these chord forms now, I could do this one finger as well. I think Glenn Watt might have a lesson out there for a one finger mama tribe. So, starting on the seventh for the D. First thing I remember knowing was a lonesome mess of love. Young and stream of growing up to drive On a great train leaving town Never knowing where I'm bound No one could change my mind but Mama tried So one finger, of course I like multi-finger chords So D and G and A7 and B minor Still doing the one finger for B minor but it just works That's all I've got for you today. We will, of course, be coming at you again this Friday with another Giddy Game show. Uh, Glenn Watt is back in house. We're very glad to see him back here after his nice vacation. So uh, I'm going to shut this down. 
consider it a successful test of the new equipment and of broadcasting directly to YouTube. We are going to be looking at doing more broadcasts directly to YouTube. I'm not saying yet that we're going to transfer the Giddy Gang show to it because it is a matter of the biggest bang for the buck. Where can we get the most viewers uh, to see what we're doing? That is still Facebook, but we're going to work on building up uh, the CB Giddy channel here on YouTube as well as the Cigar Box Nation channel. So, uh, trying to build that up okay, and advertise. Maybe we will do a Giddy Gang direct to YouTube one of these days and advertise that fact that, hey, come here to watch it. Don't don't go to Facebook. We're doing it here, trying it out, seeing what happens. So, all right. Thank you all for watching on this Monday afternoon. I'm Ben Giddy Baker. Uh, a lot of the tools I use, the parts, all this good stuff, you can get at cbgitty.com. Many of you already know that if you're watching this. We certainly appreciate you, appreciate your business, and appreciate uh, you watching and helping to spread the word about all of this. Don't forget, get on cigarboxguitar.com and download this free new tablature. I posted a few on there lately. There's some uh, Roy Orbison and some Hank Williams and some. Can't remember the third one. But it's on there in addition to this. So, alright. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.